On January 1st, 1996, Ren Hoddick posted on the Collector Star Wars News Group that he had Star Wars items for sale. At the time, this was a place for collectors to buy, sell, and trade with others. This was a time before it was easy to pay over the internet with credit card, at least person to person, so the buyers would have to take a lot of risk. A new seller to the community would often raise a lot of questions. A collector would post their experience with the seller to see if he could be trusted. Being that you mostly had to mail the seller a check, wait weeks for your item, you could see where this could be an easy way for people to rip off others. By the time the check cleared, the seller could be gone and their email address canceled. The post in 1996 may have raised a few eyebrows, but didn't really alarm most buyers. Here was a seller who posted a list of his Star Wars items for sale. Even if most users didn't think anything about it, it did raise a few questions to some of the buyers. For one, everything on his list was listed as being C10. That was code for Condition 10, mint, like brand new. To see a list where every item is C10 and with prices lower than the going rate, it seemed fishy to many. However, a lot of these buyers that may have been a little worried didn't want to miss up on a great deal. One of these buyers was Paul Leave, who sent an email right away to Wren hoping to pick up an A-Wing and a Sandcrawler and maybe even a Luke Skywalker Stormtrooper figure. Paul got a reply back that all the items were still for sale. No one had got them yet and he could mail his check for $190 to Starbase Collectibles in Wichita, Kansas. However, Paul was still having an uneasy feeling. All these rare items, all in perfect new condition? He fired back with another email just to see if he was reading the post right, asking to confirm that the two vehicles were C9 condition, all original parts and complete. A short time later, Paul got his reply. They were all men and complete with the original parts, and a promise that if Paul was not happy, he could replace any items on the list for the same value. Hoping to also get that Luke Skywalker Stormtrooper figure, Paul wrote back to make sure it had the gun and the helmet. However, after waiting a few days, he never got a reply. At the same time, other users were starting to ask questions about Ren, asking if other collectors had ever dealt with him. One of the users that was also talking to Ren was Chris Cadell who was about to make a large purchase, but was hoping to talk to someone that had done business with Wren before writing the check. Paul reached out to Chris that he was in talks to buy two ships and the Luke Skywalker Stormtrooper figure. That's when they discovered that both of them were trying to get the A-Wing that was for sale on Wren's list. It seemed both were told they could buy it. Could Wren have two of these rare ships? It's possible, but two in new mint condition? It seemed unlikely and they soon found out that Wren had promised to sell the A-Wing to yet another collector. A dealer might get lucky and have two A-Wings for sale in good condition, but three? Two was hard to believe, and three was impossible to believe. Now, with people starting to question if Wren could be trusted, he came back to the news group on the 7th of January with a statement or defense. In the post, Wren goes on to explain that he was getting tons of email about his post, most asking the same question, if it was meant and if it was complete. He said that he couldn't reply to all the emails and that people shouldn't even ask, saying that if they wouldn't complete and meant he would have said so in the post. He added that he had been collecting these items for years in order to sell them off later. After blaming some of the lack of replies on AOL, Wren let everyone know that he was a soon-to-be father and that selling items and never mailing it out was mail fraud and punishable by jail time, something he wasn't willing to do for a few hundred dollars. He also added that he might be new to the Star Wars Collector's new group, but he has sold other action figures and other groups over the last few years. Some users started to search for those other sales ads and try to talk with people that have bought from him, but nothing came up. At least nothing posted under the same AOL email address. Almost out of the blue, on January the 9th, a user named Azeroth posted about his dealings with Wren. He said that he got a mint inbox Star Wars cantina from him and it was very well packaged and got to him very fast, adding that he was very happy in his dealing with Wren and would do it again in a second. That same day, collector Gus Lopez, who had been watching the drama and taking notes, posing that Wren had on reserve with buyers eight A-wings, eight B-wings, seven Tatooine skiffs, 
seven sand crawlers, four TIE fighters, three slave ones, three Vader TIE fighters, two shuttles, two X-wings, and a Partridge and a Pear Tree. A dealer with seven mint condition skiffs, eight A-wings? Gus, like many others, knew this was too hard to believe. But what about that post? That guy that said he bought for Wren and would do it again in a second. Well, user Corrado did a little digging to find out. And other than his post about Wren, he hadn't posted on any other news group before. Finding that odd, he did a little bit more searching. It seemed Adroth was using a computer linked to Southwest Net that was based out of Wichita, Kansas, the same city Wren had listed for his shipping address and store Starbase Collectibles. It also seemed Wren and Azeroth would post on the same day within the same hour. Case closed, right? Well, not yet. It seemed half of the news group felt Wren was a con artist trying to rip off Star Wars collectors, while the other half felt he was being harassed and was being accused of something with no proof. Both sides did have a lot of questions for Wren, and on the 10th he posted answers to a few of those questions, starting out that post saying that he was not the Azeroth's user. Second, he said he would not give people his real name or phone number, saying he didn't want people calling him at home. But he did promise that whoever sent him a check would get their order. He also again let everyone know that he was getting hammered with emails and couldn't reply to them all. Still sure that the seller was up to no good, Gus Lopez started to dig a little deeper. It seemed the user of the Azeroth account was Michael Frank. And after doing some more searching on Ren's email address, it was linked to someone named Frank. No first or last name could be found. So we had two people posting about the same time in the same city and both having the name Frank. Coincidence? Gus was sure it wasn't, but said that anyone out there that thought they could trust Ren could feel free to send him money and see what happens. News group user Tango then posted asking Ren to answer some questions. Like why wouldn't he call the buyers? Why did he say he posted on other news groups, but no one could find those posts? And if he had all these ships in mint condition, and did he remove them from unopened boxes? Ren replied to answer the questions, again complaining that his AOL email was full and he was trying his best to reply to all that he could. He did say he understand people's concerns, but that some of the users were going too far. He said that every order would be shipped and for people to just wait and see. He also said he believed that name calling and slander in his name was not good for the community or his business. However, in the post, he failed to answer most of the questions that were raised. The news group on this drama went dark. For a few weeks, nothing was said. It seemed most was taking a wait-and-see approach. Then Wren returned on the 25th, saying that he would mail out all the orders by the end of the week, and again apologizing that he hadn't gotten to all the emails yet. That was until username Scoo Hall posted that his package from Wren had arrived. It seems Scoo Hall sent Wren a check for $275 after reading the post on the first day, sending the money out long before any of the drama. He said once he started hearing of all the drama, he just crossed his fingers and hoped for the best. Now the package had arrived. He opened the box to find that each vehicle that he ordered was inside the box. However, it was not the vintage ships that he hoped for, but rather small micro-machines of those ships that were common at any toy store in the 90s. $275 for a small micro-machine Falcon, Slave 1, AT-AT, and others. Looking back at the post, he said now that he can see Ren never said that these were the vintage Kenner ships, but it was clear that's what he was hoping. A few days later, Jeffrey Cahan got his package from Ren. He paid $125 for a sand crawler, a Vader TIE Fighter, and five TIE Fighter pilots. When he opened the package, he discovered they were all micro-machines also. Something that he said he could easily have picked up at a local Target for under $20. Also with the micro-machines was a letter from Wren, saying that if he wasn't happy, he could exchange any of the items for something else off the list. However, he could not give any refunds, and the address that he sent the check to was no longer his place of business. And one buyer that thought he was buying a mint on-card Lando Calrissian action figure discovered it was a Star Wars Lando Bendum. It was clear now, Ren was the Karn artist that many thought he was. He did send items, as he promised, but they wasn't what he made people believe they were. The news group was outraged, but they were also very comforting with the people that got ripped off. There were no I told you so's. There were no buyer beware, or that's what you get. It seems the community came together to give support to those that got ripped off by Ren. But who was this Karn artist? Was his name Frank? 
It seems the name on the clear check that was made out to Starbase collectibles was in the name Brian Kettler. It was also found out that the AO account was owned by Douglas Kelter. It seems the two were working together. But it seems Wren didn't just disappear after ripping people off. Wren returned to the news group, telling everyone to stop their crying, that he never said they were Kenner toys. He said that he did nothing illegal and that people should stop complaining, that he posted what he had, what he wanted for them, and what condition they were in. And people bought them. They got what they asked for. Over at a AOL Star Wars collector's group, he was even more rude, calling them dorks, saying they don't frighten him and they could never find him. Sadly, there's no justice to the end of this story. Wren disappeared. A few of the buyers did file mail fraud claims, but nothing ever became of it. Just remember the lesson learned. If a deal seems too good to be true, chances are it is. Thank you for watching. As always, please thumb up so I know you like my content. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk again soon. Junk Man. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.